This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 27 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Our guest on today's episode is Dr. Phil Carson. More about Dr. Carson in a moment. Our guest on Monday's episode is Jason Troy. Here's a little taste of Monday's episode. My name is Jason Troy. My business is Jason Troy Executive Coaching. And the role of my business is to work with executives, entrepreneurs, and rising stars to help them maximize their leadership and performance and many times really architect their career blueprint. You know, I find fulfillment in what I do because every person that I have coached and helped has had both a a, not even a business breakthrough, I would say like a life changing event, both personally and professionally, that has made a profound effect on their ability to lead their ability to manage, grow their business, make their dreams come true. And then I think feel a sense that they had meaning in this world and they had a purpose to be there and that they were really helping and inspiring other people. Make sure to check out Monday's episode with Jason Troy. Now let's jump into today's interview with Dr. Phil Carson. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host, and our guest today is Dr. Phil Carson. Before we jump into that interview, I want to make sure wherever you're listening to this podcast, click that subscribe button, whether it's iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen, click that subscribe button. Now let's learn a little bit more about Dr. Phil Carson. My name is uh, Phil Carson, and I am the owner uh, of Carson Natural Health, and also uh, I'm a co-founder of Life Transformation Medical Center. And uh, here at Life Transformation, I am the uh, wellness director at Carson Natural. I am a uh, health coach and consultant. Uh, at uh, well, at both of my businesses, Life Transformation and at uh, Carson Natural, I coach people uh, back to health. Uh, people often come to me that are suffering. They're looking for answers to their health problems, and they're primarily looking for natural solutions to the health problems. So uh, I'm a big believer in using natural therapies and something I've been trained in over the past 20 years, even though I was traditionally trained as a pharmacist over the past 20 years i have shifted to more uh, holistic and natural care and that's what people seek me out for answers to um, their health issues and what they can do naturally to correct those problems Uh, it actually started with uh, my own life and my own health issues that i was dealing with years ago where i was suffering and and couldn't find uh relief. Uh, I had taken several medications. I was drinking a couple of bottles of uh, liquid antacid every day to try to relieve the severe gastritis I was suffering from. And uh, I picked up an, a book on natural medicine in a bookstore one day uh, and started reading through it and found the answer to my problem. I started applying what I learned in that book, and it was amazing the changes that I saw. And that uh, kind of propelled me into what I'm doing now. And uh, as I uh, began to learn more and more about natural things and self-educate myself, and then I started taking courses and getting certifications and all those kind of things in, in natural therapies. And I applied it, uh, what I learned to myself as well as applying it to patients who would come in seeking help for various issues. And it just kind of kept growing from there. And uh put me to where I am today, uh, being an online health coach, as well as having uh, a brick and mortar location in my local uh, community here. 
Uh, I could tell you a whole lot of stories, Michael, uh, but uh, I'll tell you about one uh, recently where I had a, a young lady in my office uh, that was dealing with several health issues. Uh, and for her to sit in front of me across from uh, my desk, looking at me and listening to what I was telling her and to watch the tears to start to roll down her, her face, uh, realizing that uh, somebody was giving her hope. And that's what I uh, love to do is, is to help people realize that there is hope, uh, that their case is not hopeless, that they, uh, that they can find answers, that they can find solutions to their health problems. And it's not always in a prescription bottle because most of the people who come to me, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a natural answer, a natural alternative. And, uh, and giving people hope is, is what drives me, is what pushes me and, and fulfills me. It matters uh, and it's significant because there's so many people that are suffering, so many people that are sick, so many people that have, like I did years ago, tried all these different medications and still was not getting results, still was not getting the relief that I was looking for. I was still suffering. I got temporary relief of my symptoms. That's all I could get. Uh, but to be able to get a cure, so to speak, to be able to reverse those symptoms, to be able to not have them anymore and not suffer on a day-to-day -day basis anymore, that's uh, that's significant. It was significant to me, and I know it's significant to the other people that I, uh, that I work with uh, from day to day. One of the, the biggest challenges I have in my business today uh, is trying to find the time to take care of everybody that, that, that needs help. Uh, and to give people uh, exactly what they need. You know, uh, people come to me on all, all different levels, uh, economic levels as well as uh, health levels. Uh, and I want to be able to help everybody, but I can't. And, and that's, you know, that, that's the challenge. What can I do to help more people? Uh, the next uh, uh, big goal for my business uh, is to um, increase my reach with my online business, uh, to be able to reach more people online, to be able to provide more resources, uh, more help, uh, to people out there that, um, oftentimes are not even aware that there's an alternative or not even aware that there's something that they could do, uh, that would give them relief or give them, uh, help for their problem, uh, without causing a lot of side effects. Uh, there's so many people still don't know about all the natural alternatives and therapies that are out there. And I want to educate people. And that's, uh, uh, I'm a teacher at heart and that's what I love doing. I love teaching people and educating people about the, the things that are available to them that they often don't even know. We'll be right back to dive into the interview portion of our conversation with Dr. Phil Carson. But first we want to let you know about two free guides that we're offering to you right now through the JumbleThink website. The first guide is helping you to know when you have found your dream. And the second guide is overcoming the unknown. Swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. That's jumblethink.com slash guide to download the free guides. Now let's jump into our conversation with Dr. Phil Carson. Our guest today is Dr. Phil Carson. Super excited to have him on the podcast today. Dr. Phil, thanks for taking time out to, to spend some time sharing your story and insight into what you do. Well, thank you so much, Michael. I really appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to share with you today and share with your listeners. You uh, run a company called Carson Natural Health. And in the top of the interview, when you were sharing a little bit of your story, you, you mentioned that your foundation for launching these companies really was birthed out of a place of your own struggle of health. Can you tell us a little bit more of that journey and how you kind of found a solution uh, for you for health? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, it was uh, quite a few years ago uh, when I was fresh out of uh, pharmacy school. I, I went straight to work for a big chain company when I graduated. And I thought pharmacy school was stressful, but I learned what stress was all about when I had to become manager of this big chain store. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, one year out of pharmacy school, they made me manager of this store. Wow. The manager that I was working under left. And so they just naturally you know, promoted me to manager. Wow. I wasn't, pre I wasn't prepared for that uh, at all. And uh, the, the stress of it all uh, was literally killing me. 
um, I began to uh, suffer severe gastritis. I was right on the verge of having having an ulcer. Um, I was taking uh, three different medications to try to get some relief. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I was t- drinking acids, uh, liquid antacids every day. I would uh, sometimes uh, at night get home from work all stressed out, end up in the floor, curled up in, in pain wow. uh, f- from the gastritis. And the reflux, I was experiencing heartburn, indigestion, reflux from all of it. Uh, I would end up sleeping in a recliner a lot of nights. Uh, that wasn't a, a fun thing or a good thing being a newlywed. I, I, I got married to, right before I got out of pharmacy school as well. And uh, so uh, it was affecting my life in, in a multitude of ways, and um, but in affecting my health, uh, worst of all. <clears throat> and so uh, I needed I needed an answer, and yeah. uh, uh, and and that's uh, that's where I found it was in uh, the natural uh, products and natural solutions. Okay. I picked up a, a book on natural medicine uh, written by a doctor and his nutritionist wife. Okay. And uh, uh, the things I read in that book, I, I, I was definitely not taught in pharmacy school. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who was the book by and what was the book? Just out of curiosity. Um, it was Dr. James Balch uh, okay. was his name. Um, I can't recall the title of it right now. It was a, a title about natural health therapies or yeah. Encyclopedia of Natural Health or, or something to that effect. Okay. I, I don't remember. Dr. Dr. Balch was the, the author and, uh, and his wife. I, I don't recall her first name. It was quite a few years ago. Yeah. But uh, that book literally changed my life and saved my life. Uh, and I, I believe... Uh, because I, I found what I was looking for and found what I needed uh, to uh, correct my problem. Okay. Of course, the stress was a big part of it as well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I was able to uh, get another job. Okay. Uh, I had a, a, a gentleman who came to me, um, I don't know, uh, a year or so after I had taken over that manager job and was doing well with the stress and said, hey, uh, I need a pharmacist. He said, um, I have a little small uh, store in a neighboring town and my pharmacist there just left. Wow. He said, would you come to work for me? Yeah. Um, I, I jumped on it. Uh, I was, I was literally at that, at that time looking to get out of pharmacy. Okay. I was looking for another career path yeah. and, uh, because of the stress. And, uh, so I said, well, I'll give this a try a little small store, yeah. uh, less, less stress, less of a problem. And, uh, that, that, uh, that helped greatly as well. Okay. So you're on this journey and you are starting to learn that maybe the way that we've always done things isn't the best way and that there are solutions for these ailments that so many of us today are dealing with. Tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about, um, that revelation that maybe the things that you've learned or the way that you learned it might not be the reality of what's going on and that there's more to the story, if you will. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, there, there's definitely more to the story in a lot of cases or in a majority of cases with people's, uh, people's health. And, um, and, and that's one of the things that I try to do today and and one of the things that I did for myself years ago was to get to the uh, what we call the root cause or the underlying cause right. of people's health problems. That's that's the reality is that underlying cause. The symptoms a lot of times are not the reality. They're just symptoms that we're having to deal with, the symptoms as a result of what's going on uh, underneath the surface, so to speak. And um, <clears throat> so what I try to do in working with people and coaching consulting with people is try to help them get to the root cause. Yeah. Why yeah. are you having these symptoms? Okay. What, what's, what's causing them in, in the first place? Yeah. Uh, and today the modern medicine that, you know, we're all used to experiencing uh, basically covers up the symptoms. Yeah. You get, pres- you get prescribed a medication to relieve you of the symptoms right. and nobody ever sits down and talks with you about, okay, why are we having these symptoms? Yeah. Let's see if we can figure out, What's going on uh, in your body that may be causing you to have these symptoms? And that's what I discovered for my own self. I discovered one of the, my primary 
underlying causes of the of why I was dealing with what I was dealing with was not just the stress, but I actually had a, a condition called hypochlorhydria, okay. which is low low stomach acid. Right. My stomach was not producing enough acid to digest my foods properly. Wow. And uh, so uh, what I learned from reading Dr. Balch's book uh, taught me that, hey, th- you possibly have low stomach acid. You need to have this test done or you need to perform this test, this self-test to see. And that's what I did. And sure enough, uh, that that was my problem. Wow. <clears throat> and so I see that all the time with people that uh, sometimes it can be something really simple. Sometimes it can be something very, very complicated. Uh, but there's generally a root cause that needs to be uncovered. That needs to be dug up. We need to find it. And um, <clears throat> you, you're not going to to be able to do that unless you actually spend time with a person, unless you uh, interview them, question them, dig in uh, to maybe their past history or maybe right. some type of lifestyle habit that they have that could be uh, contributing to that underlying cause. So you're talking about moving away from a symptom-based uh, treatment model and more into a holistic um, uh, approach to solving problems and really going much deeper and and getting the answers instead of just saying, oh, you, you, you have this, this will fix the feeling, but it actually doesn't fix you. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's right. And what we find out a lot of times, Michael, is, is that people's health problems are actually nutritional wow. deficiencies. Yeah. Um, that need to be corrected. They don't, uh, I, I tell people, I uh, say this, I've said this quite a few times, um, you know, we don't need another drug. We need better nutrition. Right. A lot of times. Right. And, and, and that's the thing. And, uh, I have a couple of, um, uh, quotes pertaining to that, yeah. uh, that I share, that I share in my book. One is by Thomas Edison and Thomas Edison said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine but will interest his patients in the care of the human body, in diet, Mm -hmm. and in the cause and prevention of disease. Well, well, I'm a doctor of the future, I guess, according to Thomas Edison. (laughs) (laughs) And I wish wish there were a lot more doctors of the the future because that's what we need. We we don't need another drug to, you know, to cover up our symptoms. You know, we need to find out what's going on in our body and, and correct it properly. Um, yeah. and then, um, uh, the Rockefeller Institute for medical research, uh, put this statement out some time ago, uh, that said, if the doctors of today do not become the nutritionist of tomorrow, then the nutritionist of today will become the doctors of tomorrow. And wow. uh, so, you know, we're beginning to see that, uh, uh, on a certain level and, and I would, uh, I would like to see more of it. And, uh, the people who seek me out for help are people who are realizing these things. That, hey, it's there's there's more to it than uh, than just taking a medication uh, and getting relief of the symptoms. I, I know that there's got to be more. Uh, there's got to be a right. better better way, a better answer. Yeah, yeah, and, and to me, that's amazing. That here you're referencing Jefferson and what he wrote, which is you know hundreds of years ago now. Yeah, and yet. We don't seem we haven't gotten it. We yeah. haven't like had like this this universal understanding of like, hey, maybe you know, we look at the opioid epidemic that's going on and we're going, instead of managing the pain, maybe we should manage the actual cause and solve it and yeah. uh, and deal with the you know, the harder things. Get past just the easy, here's a patch, here's an easy uh, solution and really make life changes for the longevity of the years that we do have instead of patches for the immediate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we, we've got a broken health care, health care system. Uh, right. That is, that's, yeah, that, that's the problem. Uh, and b- because of the health care system that we have, the, the, uh, medical model, what's called, what's known as traditional medicine that, uh, everybody practices this day and time is, is that you've got quotas to meet. You've got to see so many patients because it's an insurance or third party payer, so to speak, 
driven right. model. You're getting right. you're getting paid by the government or you're getting paid by an insurance company. And you've got to see as many people as you can in a day uh, uh, to get sufficient amount of, of payment to keep your doors open. And if you're not yeah. if you're not able uh, to do that, uh, then you've got a uh, then you've got a problem. And and so when you've got to you know, drive as many patients through the door as you can every day, and you can only see these so many and talk to them for so long, you're not going to get uh, to those root causes. You're not, you don't have time to sit down with a patient and find out what their root cause is. It's, it, it's, you know, so you diagnose and write a prescription, diagnose and write a prescription. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's, that's the way it it is unfortunately, but there are some doctors out there, and and uh, uh, and I know quite a few of them. I'm a doctor of pharmacy. I'm not a medical doctor. No, okay. I, I'm a doctor of pharmacy, uh, yeah. but I, but I work with a medical doctor, and yeah. you know our philosophy is you know that's what we want to do. We want to try to find out what the root cause is. We want to take some time with you. We want to sit down, uh, but insurance won't pay for that. So we had okay. we have to charge people for that. You know, some people are willing to pay for that kind of service. Some people are not. Wow. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, you know, I remember several years ago uh, when I lived in Northern California, um, I had some issues happening with uh, pain and that kind of thing. And I ended up going to a chiropractor and uh, mm -hmm. upper cervical chiropractor. And it was amazing how much of a change that caused um, and how much better I felt just with that, let alone uh, the other things that he recommended with nutrition, which you've mentioned, and other things. Um, so it sounds like the methods are a lot of times very ancient. They've been around for a while. It's mm -hmm. just that we're, for whatever reason, they were lost or ignored or there wasn't enough money around them. So, uh, so since uh, these big organizations and big business can't get their, their fingers on the money, they went with alternative methods. Uh, it sounds like, like there's a rediscovery going on. Can you share a little bit about that rediscovery and why uh, people are starting to be aware of these solutions or why this is becoming more of a cultural norm instead of outliers and fringe? uh people yeah yeah <clears throat> i'll be glad to yeah well what uh what we practice here what the type of medicine that we're uh, practicing is called functional medicine and with okay. functional medicine uh, is actually the way medicine used to be practiced years ago before the big modern medicine revolution so to speak came along before yeah. Uh, yeah. big pharma came along before all these drugs started being developed Right. And uh, a lot of what drives the way medicine is practiced today is big pharma. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people look at me and say, well, you're a pharmacist. You know, you, you're talking about big pharma. Well, I can and I will because I've, <laughs> I've been part of that <laughs> system for a long time and, I'm, and I've seen how it works and I yeah. don't like how it works. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not anti-drug because drugs have saved a lot of lives and, have, and have, have done a lot of great good for people. But they're also doing a lot of harm for people, just right. like the opioid problem that you mentioned. Right. Uh, and so, but uh, fortunately, there are more and more doctors who are waking up, more and more pharmacists that are waking up uh, like me and saying, hey, we got to do something here. You know, yeah. we're, we're pushing all these drugs on people and, and we may be relieving symptoms. We may be prolonging life. But, you know, it, there's a lot of harm that's being caused here, too, and a lot of hurt yeah. uh, uh, for people. And so uh, uh, the nutrition part of it, the lifestyle part of it um, is what needs to be being taught more. And that's right. what we do. And that's what I'm preaching about. That's what I'm teaching about. Hey, uh, you know, because, you know, there are a multitude of studies out there that can show what a difference lifestyle changes can make. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I've had mul uh, multiple patients that have made those simple lifestyle changes and gotten off their medication wow. or dramatically reduced their medication. Yeah. Diabetic Diabetics that uh, have been on several medications, no medications anymore. They don't need it anymore. Yeah. They changed their lifestyle. They lost the weight. They started eating right. They quit drinking the sodas. They quit, uh, uh, you know, uh, sitting on their behind and not doing anything, <laughs> you know, getting, getting yeah. up and ex exercising, uh, you know, simple lifestyle changes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but we get, people get complacent with things and, um, uh, and they get in the, um, 
in a rut, so to speak, and it's hard to get out sometimes. Yeah. But uh, we're trying to help people get out of the rut and, and get their life back. And uh, the, in my opinion, the, the lifestyle change uh, is the best way to do it. And okay. it's something that I, I've lived myself. You know, I've yeah. been there. Yeah. I've been at that place where I was not taking care of myself. Uh, I could be a diabetic right now if I hadn't made the changes that I made. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, year uh, years ago and uh, starting to eat healthier starting to exercise consistently uh and 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 that word i just said is is the really one of the the biggest keys to it all and that's consistency yeah because so many times people will start something and i've been there myself i'll start <laughs> something it'll last for a little while then i quit right and then uh, and then i'll you know a year or two later i'll start something else and it'll last quick but being consistent day in day out with uh, your lifestyle, with correct, proper eating, proper exercise, all those kind of things. It makes a difference. And this lifestyle you're talking about, you have a, uh, a philosophy of seven keys to a more quality and quantity of life. Can you share a little bit about that and what those seven keys are? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I wrote a book last year uh, that I titled How to Live until you die. Right. The se- the seven keys to living happy, healthy, and whole. <clears throat> Those seven keys is something that I live myself and I practice uh, uh, myself and that I teach uh, other people that are looking for lifestyle change, looking for ways, things that they can s- implement into their lives. Simple things. It's not hard. It's, and, and, I, and I teach that and, and, and write about that in my book. It's, it's not as hard as people think that it is. Some people think, well, I just can't do that. I can't do this. Right. Well, you, you can, and, and you don't, you don't have to make it complicated. Some people want to get too complicated with things. I tell people to start simple, start with start, but just start, start somewhere. <laughs> you got to start, especially yeah. when, especially when it comes to, to exercise. Right. You know, right. Uh, the seven keys that I talk about uh, in my book uh, are, are related to our total uh, being, our t- uh, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and I believe we are three part beings. We have to take care of every part of our being, our body, our soul, our spirit. And, and that's what, uh, these seven keys, uh, uh, address right. one, uh, and I use an acronym, uh, called news, N E W S with a few extra S's on the end to make it, uh, uh, the seven, but, uh, N is for nutrition. E is for exercise. Uh, W is for water because most people don't drink enough water. Yeah. Um, the uh, the first S is for sleep. Uh, we don't get enough sleep either. Um, the next S is for supplements. Okay. And sometimes we do need supplementation. We do need supplements to supplement what we don't get in our diets. Right. And then uh, the next S is for the soul, the health of our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. Uh, and then the last one is our spiritual health. Okay. Wow. There's a lot there to unpack for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, 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 it's a lot there. Uh, but, uh, it, each of those seven, uh, I cover the basics and simple things and yeah. give people, uh, practical, simple things that they can implement into their lives, uh, on a day to day basis, uh, to, uh, help them live happy, healthy, and whole. So out of all of those different elements of a a, a holistic, healthy life, a lot of people are going to be listening to that and going, well, that's a lot of change at one time. Where do you think people should start in their journey of of really changing, shifting their philosophy of health uh, in that journey of becoming healthier people for the long haul, for for the the life that they want to live until they die? Um, Mm -hmm. Where should they start that shift? That's a great, great question, <clears throat> um, Michael. I appreciate that. Uh, and nutrition. Okay. Uh, that's number one. That's number one. Yeah. That's the number one key I start with. The end, and, and and that's where I tell people start. Okay. We've got to start with nutrition. And people that I coach and counsel, I, I tell them right up front. I said, now if you're not going to make the dietary changes that I'm going to ask you to make then we don't need to go any further <laughs> uh, because you, you, you've got to be willing to change what you're eating most of the time because right. most people are not eating healthy foods. Right. Uh, and some people that are think they're eating healthy foods and they're, <laughs> and they're really not. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's, it's the nutrition. Yeah. Uh, we've got to have proper nutrition. Yeah. Uh, and, 
and I teach uh, an approach that I call balanced nutrition okay. and balancing our our foods in the correct way. Yeah, uh, you know, there's all kind of diets out there, and I don't yeah. believe in diets. And I tell yeah. people I'm 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 not about diets. The diets don't last; uh, <laughs> they're temporary. Yeah, and uh, a lot of times you can do a diet for a period of time to get to a certain place in your life, but it's not it's not something that lasts. You need a lifestyle change. Right. You need to implement these practical things, daily things in your life when it comes to nutrition, uh, and keep doing them. Yeah, <clears throat> so. Uh, I teach balanced nutrition. It's a balanced approach to uh, getting uh, the correct balance of macronutrients, your your protein, your carbohydrates, your fat, uh, every time you eat. Okay. And uh, it's, it's really not hard. Uh, it's simple to do. It's just a matter of, of just starting it and doing it and continuing to do it. And uh, I um, I started eating this way. I learned about balanced nutrition 20 years ago. Uh, from a health conference I had gone to, and I started applying it to my own life. Uh, at that time, I was about 25 pounds overweight. Wow. Well, uh, shortly thereafter, after starting to eat this balanced way, I lost that 25 pounds. And 20 years later, I, I hadn't found it again. Wow. It's still gone. I wow. lost it and, and it stayed off. Yeah. And uh, so it's because of the consistency that I talked about. It's because of applying the principles and doing it most of the time. Now I don't do it every uh, day in, day out. <laughs> there are some, you know, there are some days like my uh, one of my daughters just celebrated a birthday uh, with the cheesecake factory. Yeah. I ate what I wanted. To, I ate what I wanted to eat. Uh, uh, but the next day, I went back to my regular way of eating. So okay. there you go. Is it ever too late to really make the shift back? Is it, uh, you know, how do you adjust when you've gone off the rails and you've pivoted back into an unhealthy lifestyle? How do you uh, get motivated to get back there again? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's uh, a lot of different things, uh, people that I talk with that are uh, that are motivators. So one of the one of the things that I ask people to do uh, is I ask them to answer a few questions uh, for me. One of those questions is, where do you see yourself mm. in three to five years okay. if, if things don't change? Yeah. If, if you don't do anything different, if you keep doing what you're doing today, where do you see yourself yeah. in three to five years? Yeah. And it gets people thinking, you know, if I'm feeling this bad right now, how much more worse am I going to be feeling five years from now? Right. And, um, and then, and then I asked them, where would you like to see yourself? Okay. Three to five years from yeah. now. Yeah. What is it you, what is it you really want for yourself? Right. And and the answers to those two questions we talk about. Okay. And a lot of times that session, that part of the session in a, in a, uh, in a coaching session or, uh, that I'm doing, uh, that session brings tears. Sometimes yeah. people get to thinking about where they are yeah. and, um, uh, and, and where they're going, uh, and where they really want to be. Wow. Um, yeah. And I also, you know, uh, you know, ask people to, uh, is there somebody that you love and care about? There's somebody that's depending on you uh, that's looking to you, uh, and needs you in their life. Uh, and sometimes that's the motivator yeah. as well. When you get people to think about what is your why? Yeah. And, I, and, uh, you know, and, and I've got, my, I've got a really big why I tell people all the time. I've got five children, mm. I've got a beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a grandchild. I got another grandchild on the way. I got all kind of whines <laughs> why I want to take care of myself right. and, and, and to be here as long as I can. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. Our podcast is focused on those people that are big dreamers, have amazing ideas, and are entrepreneurs. I, I think what you're sharing is a massively great idea of, of how we need to change our culture. But one of the biggest struggles for entrepreneurs, people taking that jump, is stress. Yeah. Uh, and I know stress is an area that you know uh, and talk about and share about as such a significant part of wholeness uh, health. Uh, tell us about how stress impacts us and how we can find true alignment for us as an entire human being uh, in that realm of stress and how we can manage it maybe as entrepreneurs. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, stress is a killer. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, it is one of the underlying causes of a lot of people's uh, health issues mm. and uh, including heart disease, okay. which is, which is the number one killer yeah. uh, in, uh, in our nation. Wow. Uh, and so uh, uh, stress can be a, uh, one of the integral underlying causes there. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, you've, you've got to learn to manage the stress and stop letting it manage you. Wow. So often that's what's happening. The stress is managing us. We're not managing it. Yeah. And, and a lot of times people don't even realize what the stress is doing to them or realize that they're even in the midst of stress wow. uh, because everything just kind of becomes routine to people. And, and, and I have people all the time, I ask them, I said, tell me about stress. I'm, uh, what kind of stress did you got going on? Well, I'm not stressed. I'm fine. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any, I don't have any problem with stress. Right. And then they start answering my questions and start telling me all the things that are going on in their life. And I say, and you don't have any stress. You don't even realize you're stressed right. and you are, and you are. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's a detrimental effect on our uh, health or it can have. Yeah. And it's not just the stress itself, but it's how we manage it. And mm -hmm. it's our attitude towards stress. Yeah. Uh, I, I listened to a, a, a Ted talk yeah. not too long ago okay. of a psychologist talking about uh, stress and our attitude towards stress okay. and, and how we view stress in our lives. Uh, stress to a certain extent, you know, can actually be somewhat helpful right. uh, if, if we view it correctly and if we manage it correctly. Uh, but if we don't, if, we, if it gets out of control, it gets extremely harmful yeah. uh, to us. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I tell people uh, all the time that uh, uh, you've got to recognize the stress, you've got to, uh, to manage it. And uh, a lot of people that I work with are dealing with symptoms that are based upon that stress in their lives that they've been mismanaging or it's been controlling them, uh, for years. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and it affects, uh, their health in a lot of different ways. And they don't even realize that that's what's affecting it, uh, uh is, is the stress or even past stresses. There's people that could be totally normal, totally perfect to have no problems right now, but they had stress from a period back right. maybe a year right. ago or two years ago, or maybe they had some kind of major traumatic event in their life, uh, that threw everything out of balance. Okay. Um, and so we work a lot with, uh, with people with, uh, what we call adrenal health, adrenal issues. Okay. And it's a big problem with entrepreneurs. It, it's been a problem with me. It's a lot problem with a lot of people that I work with because of the, the daily stresses, uh, uh in our lives and how it affects two little glands in our bodies called adrenal glands right? that, that control multiple functions uh, in our bodies. Okay. And when those adrenal glands are not working right, we don't work right. We have problems. Okay. So we help people find that out. We do testing, right. help people find out if that is a problem or not. But um, a lot of people just need to acknowledge that they do have stress. And that's why uh, I have... Uh, what I uh, give my patients and give people a lot of times a free resource that I have that's a stress assessment. Yeah. And then I and then it's a free stress assessment, and then it's a I also have a um, a stress guide that I okay. call the uh, the seven keys uh, to stress relief. Doctor Phil's seven keys to to stress relief, and I'll be happy to make that available to to your listeners uh, if you'd like. Uh, yeah, I'll set up a, a link they can go to. Uh, carsonnatural.com slash jumble think. Okay. Um, and um, they can go there and, and get those two documents, the, the stress assessment, as well as the uh, stress uh, relief guide. Very cool. Thanks so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. I know our listeners will too. Uh, before we pivot into our final segment, I, I really wanted to take a moment and talk about uh, we've mentioned it a couple times. You've mentioned it. I've mentioned it throughout the episode, your book, how to live until you die. Who's going to benefit from reading it? What are they going to learn? And uh, how's it going to impact their life? Okay. Well, uh, everybody uh, can benefit from it. Yeah. Uh, even, even, even the healthiest uh, person on earth uh, to the non-healthiest person on earth, um, because there's a lot of practical tips in there. Uh, what I find is that, you know, uh, even for myself, 
as healthy as I am, and I'm ex I consider myself to be extremely healthy. I'm not always healthy in every area of my life. Right. Um, I may be if totally physically healthy right now, but I may be lacking in the health of my soul or maybe mm -hmm. lacking in the health of, uh, in my spiritual health. Um, and, and so there may be something there, uh, for everybody <clears throat> in this book, they may be in a place in their life right now where they need a little push toward the physical. Yeah. Uh, they may, they, uh, and, and it may be the soul. It may be the spirit. They need a little help, a little push. Uh, and so it could benefit everybody in that regard. <clears throat> and, uh, there's, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, every chapter at the end of every chapter, I have practical tips uh, and that people can do simple things that they can implement into their lives uh, on a uh, on a regular basis that can make a, a tremendous difference in their health right. and, uh, and and in that lifestyle change uh, that we need. And uh, it's it's not hard, as I said, easy, uh, much easier than, than people uh, think it is. And uh, let me just key in for a second, Michael, on one thing there right. okay. uh, in, th in this regard, talking about uh, <clears throat> uh, the physical health and simplicity of things, because this is w what I deal with with people all the time. That well, I don't have time to exercise. Yeah, my life, my life is so busy. I just don't have time. I can't do it. <laughs> um, and I say you can. Yeah. And it, and it doesn't take much time. Yeah. Uh, but you got to start. Okay. You got to start somewhere. And if, if even if it's for five minutes a day, just start okay. exercise for five minutes. Yeah. Everybody, I'm, anybody can give up five minutes right? And, and you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes actually, but uh, you know, start somewhere. And I give you some simple practical tips in the book uh, of how you can do that. Even sitting at your desk at work. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have a desk job, uh, simple exercises that we demonstrate the person can do, uh, you know, from, uh, from your desk, you can do exercises while you're sitting and watching TV. Wow. Uh, and, <laughs> and so there's so much that people can do. They just don't think about it right. and realize it. So right. making people aware, that's the, that's the awareness is what I want people to say and what I want the book and the book will make people more aware of things. And as far as impacting, uh, you know, uh, a person's life, I've had quite a few testimonies of people have read my book and, and told me that it's changed their life. Wow. And, and, and some of it has been physical. Yeah. Some of it has been emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. Uh, that they, they, they've experienced this, you know, this life change. So, uh, that, that, uh, uh, that excites me and, and that drives me and pushes me to, you know, to want to teach more and help people more. That's very, very cool. I love that you talk so much about the intertwining of the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the, the body. The whole process of health is bigger than just um, how we view it so often in our civilization. And I think it's it's really powerful how you and others in this industry are really bringing uh, illumination or ringing the alarm bell to say, there is another way, people. There is a better way, and uh, it's going to impact your life in such a way. Thanks for sharing that with us. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, abs <clears throat> uh, absolutely. Well, w one thing, uh, too, let me mention this, because you know we're talking about uh, you know, entrepreneurs and dreamers yeah. And, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, living, uh, and, and I spoke to a group of entrepreneurs out in California a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And, and, and at the end of my talk, I looked at them and, and, and I said, look, you know, you guys are doing some amazing things in your life. Right. right. You're, you're, tu you're touching so many people and most entrepreneurs do, they touch a lot of lives. They help a lot of people and they bless a lot of people. Yeah. And this group of people I was talking to are those kind of people. And, uh, there's uh, a multitude of people that they're touching on, on a day to day basis yeah. uh, for in a positive way yeah. and, uh, and helping people in a positive way. And I said, I want to see you keep doing that. Yeah. If you want to keep doing that, then, then you've got to take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got to, to, to be your best and, and take care of yourself and live, uh, continue to, uh, to live well and to bless other people. Yeah. Love it. That's so powerful. You mentioned Carson natural.com slash jumbo think. How else can people find and connect with you? Because 
you got a lot of cool stuff going on and they might even want to dive deeper into connecting with you at even a, a, a more uh, one-on-one direction or whatever that may look like. How can people find and connect with you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they uh, can go uh, to my website, Carson, natural.com uh they can find me there uh all of my uh stuff is there all my social media links everything is there uh i do um uh podcast as well the uh the feeling good podcast on itunes oh, cool. stitcher yeah um also i do a facebook live uh broadcast uh every friday during the noonday hour central time yeah. i'm broadcasting live uh, on my uh, carson natural channel uh, I have a YouTube, Carson National YouTube channel. There's all kinds of stuff out there that uh, where people can reach me, but uh, they can get access to uh, all of those things from my website, CarsonNatural.com. Very, very cool. We'll be right back with Dr. Phil Carson and our rapid fire questions. You have big ideas and dreams and they've just been sitting there. They're in the back of your mind. They're always nagging you and you don't know how to start. Or maybe you're just afraid to start. Either way, JumbleThink is here to help. We'd love to help you on that journey of taking that dream, taking that big idea, and making it a reality. So swing on over to JumbleThink.com. That's JumbleThink.com. Learn more about our services and drop us a note so we can start the journey, start the conversation of taking that big idea and dream out of the world of your mind and into the world around you. Now let's rejoin the conversation for our rapid fire questions with Dr. Phil Carson. We're back with Dr. Phil Carson. Are you ready for some rapid fire questions? I'm ready, Michael. Shoot them at me. All righty. Here we go. The first question is, what is one tip you would give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Um, one tip uh, I, I would give them is uh, don't let uh, your fear okay. uh, hold you back. Yeah. Over, overcome that fear and get out there and do it because there's somebody out there that needs to hear your message. Wow. Uh, so get out there and share it. Don't, don't hold back. Love it. What is one change you'd like to see in the world? Uh, well, as a health professional, one change I would like to see <laughs> is, is, is people uh, putting more emphasis on their health yeah. and, and uh, for sure. Your book's called How to Live Until You Die. What do you want your legacy to be? Uh, I want uh, my legacy uh, to be that I uh, that I cared. Yeah. Uh, that uh, people look back at me and say, he lived, he loved, he cared. Mm -hmm. He really cared. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And that's that's my family and anybody I ever encounter in life that I want them to yeah. to feel like I really cared about them. Wow. Wow. Where do you find inspiration? Uh, I find inspiration <clears throat> mostly uh, from my family. Okay. Uh, from my from my wife and 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 my children. Uh, yeah. My children uh, uh, inspire me uh, all the time, and uh, they challenge me. Uh, and I, I see my kids doing some wonderful things with their lives now, and and that inspires me. What is one book you think every dreamer or entrepreneur should read, and why? Uh, well, I was actually talking about this very book with somebody this morning and okay. telling them that I need to read it, uh, again. Okay. Uh, and, uh, that's a book entitled essentialism. Okay. Not and heard Greg, of that one. McGowan, uh, essentialism. And basically what the, the book is about is, 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 uh, it's really good book for entrepreneurs because this is a problem that I struggle with, uh, myself is trying to do too much, Okay. trying to take on too many things. And it's a book about realizing what is really essential. What do you really mm. need to be focusing in on? What do you really need to be doing and saying wow. no to everything else? Wow. And uh, so I, I would uh, I would recommend that uh, for sure for uh, entrepreneurs, dreamers who uh, don't want to run the risk of getting caught up into trying to do everything and, yeah. and reach, reach everybody. Uh, but to focus in on what you're best at and what your uh, giftings are and, uh, and stay there. Wow. What is one tool that is significant for the success of your business? Uh, one tool that I use probably, well, not probably every day, is a product called Evernote. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Michael Hyatt introduced me to Evernote several years ago, and um, I've been using it ever, uh, ever since. Uh, uh, it's a great productivity tool and a great uh, resource tool uh, as far as helping me to store 
things that I research uh, all the time. I can easily go back and find that research and notes that I make and notes that I take on ideas and different things. Store them in Evernote. They're so easy to find and, tr and uh, pull back up. Very cool. You are very entrepreneurial. Uh, what is one habit you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? Um, having a uh, daily routine, okay. I would say, Michael, is probably one of the, the things uh, uh, because it's something I I used to not have okay. and do. Yeah. Uh, and now that I have more of a daily routine, I get up in the morning, I exercise, I have some quiet time, of, you know, prayer, meditation, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, start my day off right, uh, ease into the day instead of rushing into the day like I used to do. Uh, it makes life a lot less stressful and it makes my days more productive as well. Yeah, kind of staying on the same tra uh, track here. Uh, you mentioned how you start your day. How do you start and finish your day? Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, I start uh, uh, my day, as I said, with exercise, yeah. prayer, meditation, uh, those kind of things. Uh, as far as uh, uh, finishing the day, um, I don't have any kind of specific routine for finishing the day. I actually uh, am going to be transparent and honest there. I struggle with finishing the mm -hmm. day. Okay. I'm a type A person. I'm driven. Yeah. I don't want to finish a day. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep going. I, I want to keep going. I, yeah. I wish I, I tell. I, I used to say all the time, "I wish you didn't have to sleep," mm. but I know that I do, and 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 so I have to make myself go to bed at, at night. I guess that's my routine: is making myself go to bed <laughs> at night because <laughs> uh, I, I want to experience so much of life, and there's so many things I uh, want to do, so much I want to get done. Yeah. But uh, I do uh, uh, need to. Um, work on that more yeah. uh, of slowing myself down and preparing myself for bed at night, which I don't often do. <laughs> I'm, I've gotten a lot better at it. Let me put it that way. It's a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. I think a lot of us can relate to that, especially those who are really entrepreneurially driven. Uh, there's always something to research or read or do or think about mm -hmm. or another thing to experience. Uh, I can relate to you for sure on that. Yeah. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, wow, that, that's a uh, uh, that, that's a tough question because I uh, I enjoy uh, what I do. Mm. Uh, I, I guess if I wasn't doing exactly what I'm doing today, I would probably be in a uh, place a position somewhere where I'm uh, actually uh, teaching more. Yeah. Um, than, than what I'm actually doing here. Um, uh, and, uh, because I love, uh, uh, teaching and right now I'm in a, in a more of a medical profession, but, right. uh, I, I think, uh, just, uh, teaching would yeah. probably be it. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Uh, one dream would be, uh, to spend more uh, time, uh, in the mountains. Mm. Uh, I love, uh, I, uh, I love the mountains. Uh, I love to ski. I don't, I don't get to do, uh, do that near enough. Um, uh, but I would spend more time, uh, in the mountains and exploring, um, uh, the mountains and, um, uh, and the valleys around the mountains as well. Um, uh, uh, I, I love exploring, loving learning and, and seeing and new things and uh, taking new adventures. As we wrap up today's episode, what's one last thought you want to leave us with? Well, uh, since we've been talking so much uh, about health today and about choices we make and lifestyle and, and all that, uh, I'll, um, I'll leave everybody with uh, another quote, uh, one by uh, – another famous individual from years ago. Uh, she said, in the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves. Mm. The process never ends until we die. Wow. And the choices we make are ultimately our own responsibility. Wow. I tell people it's up to you. You hold the key to your health. It's your responsibility to take care of yourself. Um, but that was a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. 
as a profound thought. Uh, thanks for leaving us with that. Thank you for taking time out to share your story and also uh, such an important uh, message because I think uh, so many of us are struggling with whether it's health or stress or all of these different elements and to hear your insights into them and know that there are resources out there like your book and what you're doing it's it's just really encouraging to me and i'm excited to see what you do in the next couple of years uh, and what you create so thanks for taking time out sharing your story and inspiring all of us to live a better life man thank you michael i really appreciate you having me on your show today it's been a been an honor to be with you and and, uh, and your listeners today Thank you. Once again, we want to thank today's guest, Dr. Phil Carson, for taking time out to share his story and insights into such an important topic. I want to encourage you to check the episode notes to find links to Dr. Phil Carson and connect with him. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to remind you, make sure you swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. That's jumblethink.com slash guide to download the two free guides that we're currently offering, how to know when you found your dream and overcoming the unknown. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you share this episode or your favorite episode of the Jumble Think Podcast with that family member, that friend, that coworker, that entrepreneur you know who would find value in this type of content. By sharing it, we get the word out to more people and really encourage them to chase their big ideas and dreams. And I want to encourage you, whatever your dream, whatever your big idea is, to get out there, make a step, a small step, a big step, but any step, and start moving that big idea and dream forward and changing the world around you. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.